This is the Schmo with the pro with one of the top welterweights in the world coming off of UFC Vegas 21. Bilal, remember the name Muhammad. Thanks for joining the Schmo on the Schmo Zone Quickies. How we doing? Doing good. Appreciate you having me back on, man. Uh, I wish we were next to each other again, man. Uh, uh, I miss Vegas right now. Of course, uh, the Schmo misses you. It didn't end the way we anticipated Saturday evening. No contest against Leon Edwards, man. I guess let's start with this, man. How is the eye feeling today? Uh, it's getting better. Vision's coming back. Just honestly, like my eyeball is sore. But uh, other than that, thankfully, uh, the doctors say that the vision will be okay. Everything will go back to normal and I'll be all right. When the Schmo and Helen were cage side Saturday evening. Leon Edwards was warned the first time. Then he got you the second time. You sat down, a huge whelp. The first concern was you might have lost some vision, maybe some permanent damage to the eye. Was that an immediate concern for you, Bilal? Yeah, honestly, it was It was literally one of those where I was like trying to move my eye around, like move my eye around in my head and I like couldn't see anything. And I was like, nah, please don't. But it was more so like, I know the fight's about to end right now because of it. Cause I literally couldn't see nothing. And I was like, didn't start even thinking about blindness. It was more so like, did I just lose this fight right now? Is it over? Is the fight over right now because of this? When did you know it was officially over? Because I know they brought in the doctor into the cage. When did you know the fight would be officially called? Honestly, like when I went down, when I went down, I couldn't see anything. And then, um, Herb Dean came over and he was like, calm down, calm down. But I, I literally thought I was blind. And I was like, I, I couldn't move it. I was trying to move my eye in my head uh, to see if I could see any sort of light or anything, but it was all black. And I was like, right there, I was like, man, I know it's about to be over. There, there's no possible way uh, this guy's going to let me fight. Um, so, like, it was like from that point, I probably like, after I got poked, I knew it was bad. Uh, but then, like, just moving around my eye, I was just trying to see some sort of light or anything. It was like all pitch black. So that's why I literally thought I was like, damn, am I blind out of this eye now? And then immediately after the fight, Leon Edwards came to the post-fight press conference. He told us that he doesn't want to do the rematch. He thinks he deserves a title shot. You can't be feeling too good about that. Honestly, that's what pissed me off the most. Like, I'm a hard guy to get mad, but that's what, like, that literally made, like, angered me just because this guy is, is that, that delusional to think. You literally poked me twice, and uh, it was, like, six minutes, this whole fight. You poked me twice, and it's, the fight didn't even – get started we didn't even get going uh but you're acting like you won the fight you're acting like you earned this fight that's why that's what, this guy's like literally you're an airhead for him to think that he's always think that he's uh he's owed something you know he thought he owed, was owed a title fight before this fight beating freaking dos Anjos and Cerrone. this guy is literally delusional i think he's a uh he needs to have somebody backing him he needs to have one of those brock lesnar managers that does his talking for him because this guy is literally an idiot this guy owes me a rematch and for him to be a man, to be a real fighter, you're the one who committed the foul. You're the one who did the wrongdoing. I took this fight on short notice. I gave you an opportunity to put food on your table to, to get a paycheck because nobody else was willing to fight you. So, like, there should have been a, a level of respect there from that. But this obviously, he doesn't have that. And uh, that just shows me what type of person he is. And that's what that's what literally, like, changed my whole mindset of the guy. In his eyes, he won the first round 10-9. That's what the judges' scorecards were. And he felt like that was enough. That was enough that, hey, we saw where this fight was going to go. But look, to your credit, look, he got those head kicks. You found your equilibrium. You were fighting. It's a five-round fight. It's a championship fight. We didn't get to see what this fight could actually become. But to his eyes, it was enough for him to know. That's what I'm saying. This guy is literally a moron. It's a five-round fight. I'm a guy that picks up the pace as the fight gets deeper. If anybody's ever seen me fight, I've literally been dropped three times in a, in a round in the first round before, and I came back in the third round. So I'm not a guy that uh, loses momentum. I'm not, not a guy that loses confidence after losing one round. And it was one of those uh, things, too, where our game plan wasn't to come out high. It was to come out slow. This guy has been out for two years. We know he was going to come out hard. So our game plan from the beginning was to be relaxed, to be smart, um, not to blow our load in this first round, not to attack him right away. We wanted to see and gauge where he was at, what his style was. He shot in on me twice wrestling, and uh, I reversed him easily, controlled him on the cage whenever there was any grappling exchanges. So literally, I got way more confidence after that first round 
from just those two grappling exchanges that I felt. Um, and it was literally him initiating the grappling exchanges. So for him to, to be that happy off of a fight, that's what I said. Like this guy is one of those guys where when he was probably a kid, he was, he was getting one of those uh, participation trophies and he was happy with it. This guy's literally a joke. Quick break here, everybody. This is the schmo. This episode is brought to you by Fusion CBD Products. We got their Fusion CBD Sports Water. Love sipping on this. We got their Edelberry Gummies. These are yummy. We take their Hydro Drops, put it in the coffee in their morning. We love the Instant Freeze. Great on the Schmo's joints. Check them out at FusionCBDProducts.com. Use the promo code SCHMO to get 20% off. You won't be disappointed. Now, let's get back to the interview. What has the USC brass said to you? Has Dana White, Sean Shelby, and the matchmaker said anything to you about what's next for you? Nothing yet. I, I've been uh, calling my manager. My manager's like, relax. Let's, let's get you healthy first. Let's uh, let's worry about the house first. But it's like, for me, I'm like, I was expecting a fight. Even though I just fought Lima, I got to win off Lima. But this fight, I have a, there was like no ending to it. There was no result. Like, win or lose, I'll lose like a man. I'll win like a man. But like, I have, uh, there's no, there's a bad taste in my mouth because I put a camp in. I was expecting to get my hand raised and I didn't get a result. So that's the thing that's pissing me off. And that's making me even more hungrier to get, like, I literally want to go back to the gym and train right now, even though I just had back-to-back camps just because I'm fuming uh, off of that result. And like, you know, you go into a fight night with expectations and you're going into a fight week with expectations to get a result. Like I said, win or lose, I don't care. But like, I wanted an a ending to it and there was no ending to it. It was, uh, there was just like a bad taste in my mouth from it. So yesterday, the big news, UFC 261, the bombshell broke. We're going to have fans in Jacksonville, 15,000. Usman Masvidal, too, for the welterweight strap. Do you see that having any implications on maybe the rematch with Leon Edwards? Do you think that title fight helps your case or hurts your case in any way? I think that helps me a lot. You know, he was sitting there calling for the title shot. He's obviously not going to get it. He didn't earn it. So, like, it, this fight makes even more sense now. For that, Wonder Boy's gonna be out a while. Wonder Boy's injured. Uh, Wonder Boy and uh, Kobe are talking to each other a little bit, a little trash. Uh, I like seeing that from Wonder Boy. That's pretty funny. But like, there, who's Leon gonna fight? There's nobody else for him to fight. And I know it wasn't a storyline before. It wasn't a like a thing where uh, Bilal Muhammad's uh, number six and he's fighting number three. But it was one of those where I stepped up and nobody else would. I earned this fight by stepping up. I took the fight on short notice. I did the main event. I did all the, the glitz and glamour of uh, main event week. I, I was there on fight night, and it was taken away from me because of a foul that he committed. So, like, I feel like I deserve this rematch because of that. You and Leon both want a piece of Colby Covington. Let's say this doesn't materialize, and maybe you can insert your name into a fight with Colby Covington. Does that intrigue you at all, or is your heart set in stone on this rematch with Leon Edwards? Oh, of course. Uh, any fight, anytime Kobe's name comes up, if they ever, ever offer that fight to me, I'll take that fight for free just because I, I don't like that guy. And just a fight with him will motivate me just to, just to hit him. I literally just want to just get my hands on him. So, like, yeah, if they offer that, I would take that in, in a heartbeat. Are you anticipating the same result from the first fight and the second fight with Masvidal and Usman, UFC 261? Um, yeah, I feel like, uh, Usman showed that he, he controlled the clinch. He knows how to, he knows how to win rounds. He knows how to control it. And like, uh, just working with Trevor Whitman, as you saw his last fight, his striking looked a lot better. His jab looked a lot smoother. So I feel like Trevor's even going to, uh, have his striking to exploit, uh, Masvidal in certain spots. Again, Masvidal's going to be thinking about takedowns a lot, especially because they're first fight. So I think that's going to open up Usman striking. And like I said, people don't think that he has power, but. He showed, obviously, in that last fight that a jab could knock you out. And with four on gloves, I think Usman's going to look good this fight. For you to step back into the octagon, you have to get cleared by an eye doctor. You got a little bit of a medical suspension that came out today. But what is your perfect world, perfect scenario for when you can return into the octagon? Because, Bilal, we just saw you come back after three weeks. Um, honestly, like I said, where now I'm, like, hungry. I'm starving. So, like, I, I want to get that taste out of my mouth. So I'm hoping maybe April, May, uh, I could get back in there. Like once, once I get these stitches out, 
uh, on my eyelid, I'll probably get back to like cardio and just like running and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, honestly, like I, I feel like I need a fight now. Now I feel like I don't even feel like I, I fought. I I need a fight. I need to get that uh, taste out my mouth. I need to get that unfinished business back to work. And you'd have your head coach in your corner for this time around. We imagine as well. Yeah, yeah. That was that's what I said, man. People don't understand how hard fight week is. And like the, the stuff that comes with being a main event, like so much media, um, cameras falling around everywhere and it being a three week fight. Like we had to, we had to put it all into one little basket and like, just keep moving forward, just keep moving forward. And then he got popped for COVID. And then we thought he was going to be able to, he, he retested himself uh, outside of the, from the UFC and it was negative. So then the UFC gave him another shot and we thought maybe on Saturday he would, but they said there's still small traces of it. So it was like, one of those things where like we were getting highs and highs, lows and lows, but it was, it was all a lot of turbulence. But like I said, we made it to fight night and that was the goal just to make it the fight day. So we made it there, but uh, it wasn't the result that we wanted. So hopefully we can run it back and you know, everything will be a lot smoother this time around. On a lighter note, the Schmo wants to apologize. You mentioned you were hungry earlier on our interview this time last week, we talked about hot dogs. It's pork. I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they, they do got some Vienna beef side here though they, there's, there's some Vienna beef side here in Chicago so we're good of course and then final thoughts you want to leave the listeners the viewers out there worldwide before we see you return inside the octagon honestly I, I gained a lot of fans this week I, I gained a lot of people that are following me this week and I want to say I appreciate everybody that supported me and that are asking about my health and even the ones that are, are trolling and hating on me and like there's so many, are, well, you lost the first round. It was going to go like that. I, I love that. I love that energy. It, it makes me more motivated. I appreciate you guys. And a shout out to like all the fighters that literally messaged me that came out and uh, uh, asked about my health and that, that supported me and are supporting the rematch because they know how it feels. They know what it is. Um, so thank you guys for everybody out there. It's great to see you have two functioning eyes and your name right now is cemented in the mix and top welterweight contention. Bilal, remember the name Muhammad, the Schmozone Quickies. We appreciate your time. Thank you, brother.